The biggest marketing trend in the digital age is the almost overnight and meteoric rise in the use of phones and tablets on the internet. People now use their phones to search for and buy the things they want or need. It's vital that users get the best experience on a website no matter which device they use, a laptop, phone, or even a tablet. This has led to the rise of a marketing buzzword, the mobile UX, or mobile user experience. Since all of these devices have different characteristics, how does it all play out when it comes to the technology used in developing websites in the modern day? It's pretty simple. The key is in understanding how the experience a person has on the web changes when they move from using a desktop or laptop computer to using a phone or tablet. Here are some key differences. First, there's no mouse. There's no way to right-click for options when you see something you like. However, you can swipe and scroll and easily change the size of the content with pinch gestures. Next, the screen is much, much smaller, and simply shrinking an image often won't work. A chair might look great in a room setting on desktop, but shrink that picture to phone size and the image of the product becomes tiny. It might be that just a different picture showing the product you're selling is needed for a phone. Finally, mobile devices have much smaller memory and lower processor power than a desktop, and this makes it harder to show complex things like photos and videos. Now, how about the technology used to solve these problems? Well, when you're on any device and connecting to a web server, the data stream that goes to the web server includes information about the operating system, browser, and device type. This basically means the website knows what device it's talking to in terms of brand, model, and related things like screen size. Armed with this information, there are two strategies that people use to develop sites that are optimized for the device it's being viewed on. The first is to use a fully separate mobile site. This is where the server is programmed so that when it detects a phone, it sends it to a separate mobile-friendly site. That site will have text, images, and design specifically for a small screen. This is usually called having an M.Dot site because the website it sends the phone to is m.whateversite.com. The method is one of the earlier ways of making websites and isn't really used much anymore because it basically requires that the engineers build and maintain two separate websites and code bases. Ever get a friend that sends you a link from their phone that looks all big and weird when you open it on your laptop? It was probably because they sent you the link to that separate M.Dot mobile site. The other, more modern and increasingly common way of solving for different device types is what's called a responsive site, a single design that responds to the device type by changing the content size or actually changing the design for smaller screens. This can be done in the CSS code by setting what are called breakpoints. Breakpoints adjust the size and position of elements on the screen based on the width of the screen. This method may limit how complex your designs can get, but it's much faster and easier to maintain. If you want to see this effect in action, try pulling up a website on your laptop and resizing the window to be much smaller. If the text, buttons, and images move around to fit that smaller size, it's responsive. So there's your simple guide to websites built for the mobile revolution. Though you'll run into a lot more native development on mobile devices these days, mobile web is still something you need to be confident about no matter which business you're in.